The purpose of this tutorial is to go over the right hook reverse epsilon, er, and the schwa, er. Uh, they are both mid-central rounded vowels. However, er is tense and er is lax. Um, <clears throat> let's start with the right hook reverse epsilon. You can find that in words like bird, shirt, courage, curb. Um, the schwa, we can use um, some top-down information on that. <clears throat> it is often used for the morpheme at the end of words that mean a person, like um, farmer, barber, tailor. So what are some strategies we can use to help um, discriminate between these two? Well, they are contrastive. Uh, we could have a word uh, like uh, liquor, and the stress is on the first syllable, and um, the second syllable is unstressed, and that's going to be the schwa, liquor. It's very short. Um, however, <clears throat> we could replace the schwa with the right hook reverse epsilon, and you get liqueur, liqueur, and that's fancy liquor. Um, <clears throat> let's take a couple words and see if we can figure out strategies um, to um, know which one to use. Let's take the word burger. The first thing we're going to do is um, we recognize that we hear the vowels that um, are either going to be the right hook, reverse epsilon, or the schwa. So then we look at stress. Where is the stress in the word burger? Burger. Burger. It's on the first syllable. Well, here's an important note. The schwa, like the schwa, can never occur in a stressed syllable, ever, ever. <laughs> so that tells us right away that the schwa can't be in the first syllable. Um, and so what we'll end up with <clears throat> is the right hook reverse epsilon in the first syllable, burr, and the schwa in the second, ger, burr, ger. Let's try another word. Let's do the word perturbed. First, let's find the stress. Perturbed, perturbed. The stress is on the second syllable. So based on that, uh, we can assume that the right hook reverse epsilon will go into the stressed syllable and the schwa will go into the unstressed syllable. Perturbed. But here's another strategy we can use to test our hypothesis. Er tends to be longer and the schwa er tends to be very short. You may not always know when you're right, but when it comes to language, it's really easy to see when you're wrong. The wrong one stands out uh, more than the right one sometimes. So what we're gonna do is this. We're going to exaggerate the vowels and one will sound strange. Uh, the right one won't always necessarily sound right, but the wrong one will sound wrong. Let me show you what I mean. If we go back to our example of um, burger, um, I can exaggerate the syllables um, and um, lengthen the first and shorten the second one. Burger, burger, okay? Now let me try it the other way. Burger, burger, no, that sounds weird. So that shows us, uh, it's a little test to see um, what works and what doesn't work. Let's try it with perturbed. So um, we thought that it might be 
the schwa followed by the right hook reverse epsilon. Let's check ourselves. Perturbed, perturbed. Now let's try it the other way around. Perturbed, perturbed. No, that sounds strange. Um, you are unlikely to have um, two right hook reverse epsilons in a two syllable word. Let me see if I can think of an example. Berber, there you go, there's one, Berber. And <laughs> they are both long, Ber, Ber. Uh, one isn't short, Berber, Berber, or Berber, Berber. So you can ex exaggerate these and I think it will make it stand out more and um, will help you uh, decide which one to use.